This week on the Inkwell, it's a mashup of old and new as we take a look at the Parker Fantasy 51. Welcome to another video from the Inkdwell. This week, we're taking a look at my Parker Fantasy 51, and this was made by taking acrylics milled by Ariel Kolak and mixing in some Parker new old stock parts, like the iconic clip here, and the finial decoration, which honestly, I think is a very good match to the purple, orange, and beige that Nick Peng selected for this particular pen. I had no clue this pen was actually going to happen. All I know is RoboJim sent me a message on Discord and said, hey, you're getting a pen. So this is actually the first experience I've ever had with the Parker 51 body. Now, a lot of companies have gone out of their way to just flat out copy the hooded nib design like you've got here the slender body, the friction fit cap, and literally just the overall look of the pen. But one thing that they just can't do is take the original Parker 51 parts like we have here for the filling system. And as you can see, it it's in beautiful shape. Nick found some good old stock here. As you can see, it still has all of the instructions for filling the pen and really legible, just some micro scratches and it's actually a perfect working filling system. Now, let's go ahead and do one other thing. Let's go ahead and take the hood off the nib so you can take a look at this particular tube nib design and how it sits in the pen. This particular nib is a fine gold nib and I haven't had any flow issues with it. Like I said, I got this from Nick Peng and his specialty other than just really good calligraphy you should check out his work is restoring these vintage parkers and other vintage pens he does an amazing job with it and makes sure that each pen you receive is going to write perfectly each and every time unless of course you screw something up which that's not on him that's on you so let's go ahead and put the pen back together and see how the parker 51 writes well, at least this Parker 51. So we're using our workhorse Rhodia number 16 dot pad. And for the ink, we are using um, Robert Oster Morning Mist. Now, for those who write quite a bit with Robert Oster inks and are familiar with Morning Mist, you know that it's more of a lighter and more pale blue ink, like there on the uh, swatch on the top of the um, ink bottle. I didn't know it, but when I was at the 2018 Chicago Pen Show and I was talking to Nick with Jim sitting there smirking at the conversation because I'd never actually seen or written with a Parker 51 at that time, Nick was actually asking me a lot of questions about like, what types of nibs I write with, what I look for. And I just threw it out there that I like nibs with a heavy flow. So this fine nib has been tuned to flow like a fire hose. You can see that the ink is coming out extremely dark. And it's just because of how much ink this nib and this feed are dumping on the page. Now, this pen is also a good example of why you should have a professional nib smith or pen restorer take a look at your pen, because as long as they know what they're doing, which Nick definitely does, they can change the entire character of whatever nib you throw at them. In this case, Nick took a beautiful vintage Parker nib, took my feedback, and created a buttery smooth nib with no extra feedback. And look at that flow. It's a good medium to medium heavy flow from the nib, which for me 
is perfect. That's what I was looking for, and that's what he delivered. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what the Parker 51 inspired, or at least the blatant ripoffs that the Parker 51 inspired. Here we have the Wingsung 601. So, other than being slightly longer and having a much longer clip, you can tell that these pens are, well, pretty much just flat ripoffs of the 51. Um, filling system may vary, but still. I think they even copied the Parker Fill system. But let's take a look at these um, clips. Except for the taper at the end of the arrowhead and the length of it overall. Although I think there is actually a Parker clip that has the same taper on the arrowhead. It's same feel and look. I mean, you can put the cap from the 601 onto the 51 and it's almost identical. So even the section length is spot on. The hooded nib is spot on and the uncapped length is within an, I'd say a 16th of an inch of being spot on. The only difference between the 601 and the Fantasy 51 is that the 601 uses this plunger filling system, which I've also found a way to bypass because it never actually fills the ink as much as I like. And these ink viewing windows, which once again, I think Parker had another pen that actually did the same thing. And taking a look at the nibs, because Wingsung pretty much releases everything with a fine nib. In the hand and on paper, they perform, if Nick hadn't worked on the nib, almost exactly the same. On the Wingsung 601, the nib is a little drier. Um, it was actually a lot drier than this before I did some work on it myself. And it was scratchy when I got it, and it took a lot of work to actually smooth it out. But the tube nib is pretty much a blatant ripoff of the Parker 51 as well. But that also goes to show how iconic the Parker 51 really was. Aside from the fact that people are now making these fantasy 51s, it inspired a whole bunch of ripoffs. So there you have a really quick look at the Parker Fantasy 51. It's a great pen, and if you can't find an old Parker that can be restored, you can pick up a lot of these Fantasy 51s, both online or at a pen show. If you go with the pen show route, I highly recommend that you visit like Nick Peng's table so you can take a look at the Parkers he has available. And I also recommend that for anyone in the fountain pen world that hasn't, you really should try getting a vintage pen and writing with it. You may find yourself pleasantly surprised at the quality and craftsmanship that you'll get from these vintage writing devices. And there's a lot of great vintage restorers like Jessica Coles, who does a lot of Esterbrook restorations, Nick, who does a lot of Parker and other pen restorations that can take these masterpieces and make them truly your own. So that about wraps up this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Ron and Penn Chalet for being longtime sponsors of the Inked Well. If you like what you saw, click that like button. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Either way, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Support the channel at patreon.com slash the Inked Well. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Inked Well. Till next week, I'll see you next time. Okay.